Hello to another Toon Boom Animate Pro 3 tutorial starring me, Ollie Putnam. And um, this time I'm going to talk about um, very, very basic rigging. You can do very elaborate rigging with this sort of program. You can take days and days over it if you want to, to create very, very, very advanced rigs. Um, but uh, for the purposes of this tutorial and for easing you into the process, I'm going to show you kind of how rigging works um, in its most basic form. Um, I'm going to make a drawing and I'm going to create a dragon with a long neck. So the first image will be its head and I'm going to give it little glasses and um, there you see, winner of the Stud Muffin of the Year competition. Um, there we are. Oops, don't want to see that. <coughs> okay, so now he's moved over, and uh, I'm just going to. label this head. No, not GH, head. Um, so we've got our frame one. Then I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to create uh, the first part of his neck. Now this is incredibly crude but uh, we'll get the idea uh, and we'll call that previous, the drawing we've just done, ugh! I'm drawing we've just done neck one, oops, and we'll do on this layer, we'll do another part of the neck and call that neck two. And finally, we'll do the body. There we go. And we'll call that body, funnily enough. Now, I'm going to fill these in with a colour so it's a bit clearer what's what and what's going on. So let's just use that skin from the toad uh, colour palette that we created in the previous tutorial. And I'm going to fill that in like that. Oh, gold, hang on, I've just noticed. We're on the overlay art layer here. So if I tried to fill, if, let's just try and get rid of that. If I tried to fill that using any other layer, I wouldn't be able to do it. So let's assume that I knew what I was doing and <laughs> everything is on the overlay. That shouldn't really make any difference for this tutorial, but uh, you know, just something to bear in mind. On that, I'll do that. On that layer, I'll do that. And on the head, I will do that and give him slightly different colors for the hair and stuff. I'll do, oops, do red hair and uh, white glasses and teeth. There we go. I'll also create red spines for there and there and there. Okay, so now we've got our character. Now at the moment they're in the wrong order. The head should really be on the top and the body should probably be on the bottom. Basically it should be flipped the other way around. So if I move the head to the top, now it's in the right order and if I move that down the bottom that's in our order, and if I move that there, there we go. So now they're in the correct order. Now, to manipulate these as a kind of stop motion puppet, if you like, um, I'm going to use the transform tool. I'm not going to use these tools because as we've established in the previous things, these affect the drawings, they do not affect the placement of the glass. And basically, each of these drawings is on a different pane of glass. It's on its own layer. So, whoops, let's go back. So using the transform tool, if I were to move the body around, now you'll notice the body's pivot is way over here and we probably want the body to tilt, tilt, sort of, oops, big button, tilt there. So what we'll do is we'll use this which is the drawing pivot tool. And we shall move the drawing pivot. We don't actually have to drag it. I can just go bing, 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 bing. But I'm just gonna pop it there. 
and then I'm going to select the neck layer and that drawing and the first neck so it would be there and then this one would be there and the head would be there. So if I go back to that now the head can pivot there, that can pivot there, that can pivot there and that oopsie daisy can pivot there. Now you'll notice that um, Toon Boom has already automatically created a keyframe every time I moved something and that is a very important feature because the way this works is um, set up properly. Remember, do you remember that if you used Flash you'd have to select all the elements and then you'd have to sort of rearrange a pivot and then you'd have to move something around and then you'd have to, this is how I used to work, select the bits and pieces and just move each bit individually if I was creating a little puppety person. And uh, it's all, you know, it's doable and it creates some interesting results but it doesn't, it's not very good for a lot of work and it does take an awful lot of time and it just, you know, it's a, it's a pain. Now the way this can be done is that very, very quickly I can connect all these bits up and it will all work in unison. How do I do it? This is how I do it. That's connected to that. That's connected to that. That's connected to that. So now I've created a hierarchy. Now you notice at the moment it looks a bit of a mess. That's because they're actually, as far as I know, in the right positions, but um, they're in the wrong order again. So now this makes no sense. Now we want the head to be on the top, but in order to do that, the head is the child of that, which is the child of that, which is the child of that. We can't put the head on top. How do we do it? We have to select that layer and that drawing and then using, <clears throat> using a, a hot key, which I can't remember what it is, I'm afraid you're gonna to have to look it up, but it is a specific hot key. And I can move it in Z space. I'll show you what I'm talking about now. If I create a window, oh, go away. If I create a window that shows you the stage in a kind of perspective way from the top. And so this, V shape represents the camera and this is what the camera is seeing and then if I zoom right in this pink line represents the thing that's selected in this case the head and if I zoom right in using these tools I can manipulate things on the stage now these tools I hadn't really covered before but this is when you're manipulating things um, in, th in sort of three dimensions, because this is kind of doing the th third dimension. This is Z, forwards and backwards. If you're looking at this, all these drawings are absolutely thin. They're completely thin. And when you look at it from the top, they are very thin. I mean, they're just, they're just a line. If I was to move the head in front of the other things, now it's in front by a lot, I'm able to move that back. Just move it in front there, and there we go. You see, it's in front now. And I can move them. I'm just using this hotkey to move, to shift things, to nudge things backwards and forwards. You'll notice, you can just about see the head, because that's connected to that, is moving with it forwards as well. So I want to move the neck forwards. So I'm just going to move that forwards, and I move just select that and I want to move that forwards a bit as well and there we have our body which is connected up correctly and the interesting thing is with this is that I can manipulate that and then when I move that I can manipulate all the rest now the thing that I don't like at the moment is that this part is um, is not really positioned correctly. Now if I were to move that over, it would still move in relation. So what I can do, I can still, I can just move that over to the correct place and it will stick. See? So 
This, in a very short space of time, has suddenly allowed us to create a full puppet in, in minutes, you know, and it's, it works. Um, let me try uh, to show you how it can work. If I, we've got uh, drawings on frame one, if I extend the exposure, so now we've got this whole timeline filled with stuff. And I say at frame 30, I want to create uh, some animation. Now I don't have to insert a keyframe, I don't have to do anything. All I want to do is move it. So as soon as I move that, it creates a keyframe automatically. It doesn't, I don't have to do anything. And if I want to move the head, I can move the head. And it creates a keyframe automatically there. Bink, 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 bink. These are stop motion keyframes. And then if I create motion keyframes for both, See? It automatically fills in the gaps. So this is a good way of doing uh, some quite simple stop motion -y type animation um, using Toon Boom. I wouldn't recommend it for everything, but um, for moving vehicles around, for having um, complicated characters, for quite a lot of functions it can be useful. Um, for facial rigs and stuff like that. It can really be useful, even for stuff that you wouldn't even notice it was being used in, it can be useful. Um, this is another example of how useful it can be. I've got um, two positions there. And if I wanted to create another drawing, I can, within that, so I wanted a different facial expression, but I still wanted to keep that movement. I could select a drawing, right click, and create empty drawing and then using the um, onion skinning now the thing is I filled in those colors which if you were working on something you know might not be the best thing to do I think you can set it so it just does a sort of um, ghost image so it wouldn't fill it in with with red but uh, for the moment it, it's fine um, if I just wanted to do this And then I fill that in, just turn that off. And there we've got it, you see? It, it remembers where it has to go because as I say, we're changing the drawing, not the piece of glass that it's affecting the drawing. Now that is how useful <coughs> it can be when you're creating um, a character on the fly and you want to just create not necessarily a different mouth position or a different head but a different hand position or a different foot position that's far more likely because you're not going to have a whole bank of different hand positions before you start animating you're going to have one or two and then you want to be able to change them on the fly and that is how you would do it and for a ba very, very basic rig, I mean, believe me, you can go into a lot more detail than this, but for the very basic stuff, this, if you wanted to quickly get a piece of animation out in next to no time, is incredibly powerful, incredibly well thought out. It's, it's one of its best features, I think, um, its handling of this and how simple it is. Um, I can collapse that up, so now I've got essentially my entire dragon just on that layer. And I can just, I can just go in, I don't have to go in and create another keyframe or something, I can just go in and fiddle, and it's sort of, these white ones represent only a keyframe that affects only one layer or two layers or whatever. Whereas the black ones represent keyframes that affect every layer. You know, if I look there, I see keyframe and every keyframe, I don't know, I don't know what it's doing there. I'm talking rubbish, obviously. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe if I do one there, let's just see what happens. Oh, come on. I don't know, oh, I don't know then. Um, but that tends to mean that that's not affecting every layer. Anyway, if I go here and I manipulate that, so it'll be there. Say, set motion keyframe. 
notice that jud there because these two aren't a motion keyframe, they're a stop motion one. So you can mix and match and play around with things, but that is pretty much the way rigging works in Toon Boom.